Greetings, I'm Don the Crown, and today I want to share with you the build that blasted me through the Wolson storyline all the way into Endgame, and it's just been so much fun that I ended up actually playing for about 30 hours straight, and uh, it's just been very, very powerful and very, very smooth, so I definitely wanted to share it with all of you. Here we go. Alright everybody, let's talk about the skills that you're going to be using with this particular build. Aether Jump, and what Aether Jump is there for is for Stasis. And this is something you don't necessarily need to level with because uh, you're probably not going to be taking the Stasis mod right away. And honestly, Aether Jump is not really the best movement skill as you're trying to traverse a lot of ground while leveling. Uh, so probably what I would use instead while leveling would be Warpath. Warpath is really nice because once you get charge the skill to channel for longer, once you get this, uh, basically you can just hold it down and go, go, go. So that's really great for all the straightaways and all the other things that you can just charge right down and do really well. Uh, the next skill up is Bork of Dawn. This is a great skill because basically once you get all the way down here, uh, creates a healing effect that follows you around. It can give you some other buff, including like, uh, gives you sacred damage and other things like that. And this is just nice in general because uh, it's just nice to have on you. If you're like low on life, you don't want to pop a healing flask or don't have a healing flask left, uh, you can you know have this all the time. And with enough cooldown duration, or enough cooldown, the duration is equal to the cooldown basically. And so you can have this up 24 seven. Uh, the next skill is the most important skill in the entire library of what we're using, and that is Arctic Spear. Arctic Spear is great because it is spammable, it's a spell, and it consumes willpower. Now when spells consume willpower, they uh, create rage as like a side thing. Now this is not generating rage, this is kind of like pooping out rage. And so like the generation mods that you see probably don't affect this at all, how much rage you generate. But it's like pretty much if you spend 10 willpower, you'll create 10 rage on the other side. Now, the uh, skills you want to use for this doesn't really matter as long as you do not take the minus willpower costs. Because pretty much what you're going to be doing is you're going to be spamming this skill all the time. And as you can see here, your rage bar is filling up. And this is allowing you to use all of your rage skills. Now, sometimes you might want to uh, stop and like allow it to like give you some more willpower so you might be able to like uh, cast your bulwark of dawn or do some other things but for the most part you're just gonna be spamming away this actually works really great with blessed silver which is something we'll talk about in a little bit but this is a uh, passive point that basically whenever you shoot off a projectile skill uh, you lose an ammunition counter and you get 10% melee damage for each empty ammunition counter you have. And so since you're, and this is like seen right here on the screen, so since you're pretty much just spamming these off nonstop as you're running around doing a map, this is giving you 50% melee damage basically for free all of the time, just for doing stuff that you're already doing. So this is very strong. The next up is Juggernaut. And Juggernaut is a great defensive skill. This is very similar to Molten Shell from Path of Exile. And what it does is it creates a shield around you. And you can see the bar at the top about how much life is left on this. This has saved my butt a whole ton of times in, ter in terms of maps, in terms of bosses, and I highly recommend it. With a lot of cooldown reduction gear, uh, the duration is about the same as the cooldown. So you're pretty much safe a lot of the time. And when it's down, you can kind of back off. Uh, last but not least, Bleeding Edge. Bleeding Edge is kind of the skill that I've enjoyed using the most, mostly because it kind of feels a little bit like Blade Vortex, uh, one of my favorite skills from Path of Exile. But I would not recommend using this until you get Unstoppable Momentum. What Unstoppable Momentum does is it turns uh, Bleeding Edge from it's a skill happening. that basically just kind of whips uh, your weapon around you, like so, and turns it into something that stays behind. And so this does a ton of damage in an area, and generally by the time you get to about Act 2, the very beginning, you'll be able to uh, level this up enough to actually start using Unstoppable Momentum. Uh, while I was leveling, I was basically dumping all of my points into uh, this, right here, but it can level up, and that would 
push it forward. And so as you can see, my bleeding edge is now level 56, which is kind of a little bit ahead of the other skills that I'm like primarily using, like Warpath, for example, only being 44. Uh, okay, now, great. since you're not going to be Bye using then. Bleeding Edge as your primary skill while you're leveling, <sighs> what I recommend using is Wrath of Baphomet. What Wrath of Baphomet does is it pretty much sweeps around these huge chains that uh, are able to hit a whole bunch of enemies and clear out a whole bunch of stuff. Now, they are pretty fast and they do kind of require a lot of rage. Uh, so getting the rage cost reduction and maybe even the rage generated from killing an enemy does help out quite a bit. But if you start to run low on rage, uh, regardless in this build, you're going to want to be chugging down your greater rage pot and uh, moving that rage over. And uh, I'd recommend probably the two most important skills if you're leveling is the number one Arctic Spear, because Arctic Spear can pretty much power any attack rage skill. And then second, like the chains, Wrath of Bahafmet. I think this is uh, hands down the two most important skills for you to get right off the bat. And then you want to get Bleeding Edge so you can start leveling it up. And that's the way to go. Next up, let's talk about the passive skill tree. Now, this is kind of a crazy skill tree for most people because you can, uh, as you know, maybe, you can turn the skill tree in all sorts of different ways. Now, I'm not 100% positive that this is the best way to play, but uh, this is kind of what worked for me and what I've enjoyed so far, and I've had great results with it. What I recommend doing is starting off going down through the soldier tree and going down and getting this Kind of series of nodes. Now I'll, I recommend getting the cooldown reduction for all skills and we're going to actually get that in all three corners here because this is the only spot on the tree where you can get cooldown reduction and it's very very strong. Uh, we're going to go over I like getting wild card for the critical strike chance uh, and then going and getting merciless lethality pretty early on and then we're going to go out through the other side here go through sentinel and we're going to go and get backline raider and then going to go up here to manic slaughter and then Blessed Silver. And this is going to be really good because it's going to be a lot of damage as you're leveling. Like we talked about before, Blessed Silver, basically what this does is as you're spamming out your little uh, Arctic Spear, right this is basically going to uh, empty out your Blessed Silver ammunition points, giving you 50% uh, melee damage, which is notable at this kind of level. And then next I really kind of moved over here towards uh, duty to exterminate and residual energy. These are both really nice. Uh, then I ended up getting Witch Time Cannot Heal and pers Persistent Hunting uh, later on. Now these are kind of like once you're going to be using your Aether Jump to be applying uh, Stasis. This only really matters uh, when you're trying to really take down big targets. Like I barely even use these in uh, dungeons right now because uh, hit an enemy with the stasis from the jump and then that makes them take 100% of damage after a 1.5 second delay. That's actually 120%. So that's like 120% more damage. So honestly, I think this node is probably one of the most busted nodes on the tree that is working as intended. So uh, very, very good there. Last but not least, I kind of am going over here right now towards uh, the more maximum willpower and rage, going through some of the rage cost duration, and I think I'm going to go and get Covert Operative. Now we still have quite a few levels to go, uh, we're only 55 right now, so we'll be figuring out the build and of course respecting and moving stuff around, and uh, that's what I recommend. Lastly, let's talk about gear. Now it's really, really important with this build that you're going to be using a one-handed melee weapon with a, a catalyst in your offhand. If you're not using catalyst in your offhand, you cannot use Arctic Spear to generate your rage. And so this is a really powerful combination because you will do melee skills and cast spells at the same time, something you normally don't do in an action role-playing game. Uh, on your catalyst, I highly recommend that this transfer time reduction between willpower and rage have the lowest number that you could possibly find because uh, unlike every other piece of gear that you'll find, this is actually a negative number. So this is setting back your other pieces of gear a significant amount. And you can see that I've actually used gems here to try like abate that as much as possible. 
on your weapon. You want it to be the total damage as much as possible. Uh, and then go ahead and socket more flat damage in as well. Uh, and that's going to be very, very strong. And flat damage is amazing. If you can get uh, three flat damage gems in there, go for it. Highly recommend it. Uh, pretty much the way you can tell what type of gem is going to be is basically if you look at it, you see how this says find ruby offensive one gives you flat damage on attacks with this weapon offensive two is a flat damage with spells and then offensive three is the bleed ailment well if you take a weapon and you go over here a jeweler's work is never done and you go what to the second option for? and you socket it you can see here that there's offensive three offensive three offensive two they all have their different shapes offensive one is a circle uh, let's see if we can get it real quick. There you go. There's offensive one. Perfect example. And as you roll through here, like if you can have three uh, sockets on an item like this, it'll roll between zero, one, two, or three. And sometimes uh, it's really easy to go broke rolling these. So especially while you're leveling, don't try to roll these too much. Uh, for boots, I definitely highly recommend movement speed. Movement speed is like pretty much key, especially while you're leveling. Uh, we get as much movement speed as you possibly can because you want to go fast uh, through the different zones. You're just spending most of your time walking. And for pants, the mod that I like the most is the transfer time reduction between wheel willpower and rage. Pretty much what this is talking about you is as you're weird. switching your resources, like you're burning my resource right now with Arctic Spear, I'm burning willpower and it's turning into rage. You can see how there's like a dark purple bar for a little bit there. That is uh, my uh, willpower getting converted. And right now you can see my rage is getting directly converted into willpower. That's pretty good. Uh, that is what is affected there. If you had not very much conversion speed, it would feel very slow. And so for example, if I suck a potion down, you can see like a little bit of this brown rage bar over there. You want to eliminate as much of that as possible because you can't use the uh, transferring rage or willpower at all. And so we're going to be looking for a lot of that on our gear. I uh, also recommend cooldown reduction for all skills simply because we want to keep our Juggernaut and Bulwark of the Dawn up as much as possible. So you can look for that on your chest as well. Uh, also your hat. And uh, for gloves, what I recommend is looking for this uh, rage and willpower cost reduction. And then like other good mods like attack damage and resistances and um, maybe ferocity or ferocity and a crit hit score as well. Shoulders, you're looking for more rage and willpower cost reduction, uh, maybe some damage, other things like that. Uh, for rings, flat damage is really, really big here. You're going to get as much flat damage to attacks as you possibly can. Uh, flat damage to spells isn't really going to help you. And socketing transfer time reduction is pretty nice. Uh, crit hit damage is also very nice as well. And then uh, for amulets, flat damage, attack speed score, and attack hit chance. Now, I actually managed to have an amulet survive all the way from level 23 until about right before we made this video. This amulet is surprisingly really, really good. Uh, 19 all attributes is very strong. 4 to 10 physical damage added to attacks and material damage. All of these kind of work together. So this is pretty much a perfect example of what you want to find as you're leveling. Now, of course, you got to settle for what you can find, but that's a pretty good uh, option. Lastly, for belt, uh, I don't really know if I have a really great belt right now, but just flat damage and uh, attacks, critical strike and other things like that are really, really good. Uh, in terms of socketing, I've been socketing for the most part in the defensives, a uh, defensive twos and looking for like a cult and elemental uh, resists. And if I have defensive threes, I'm stacking maximum life and I have like a global leech in there as well to like help out with leech. And uh, generally like I just try to balance my resists as much as I possibly can. Uh, for my support, I, I have a little bit of frost damage that's coming from some of my uh, passives. I'm using residual energy, so it's making me do cold damage. So that's giving me a little bit of leech as well. Lastly, let's talk about how I actually go about uh, doing a map. So the first thing you do is I, when I open it up, 
is I will start spamming my Arctic Spear because I want to get my Rage generation up. I see definitely some of these where I portal in and I'm immediately surrounded by enemies. So I'll even throw up my Juggernaut and my uh, Bulwark of the Dawn right away. Ooh, look, a free chest. And so I pick up some loot and I'll just continuously spam Arctic Spear. And once I start to see enemies, I will uh, throw out the edge. Maybe we don't actually have the right mods on right now. Here we go. And so since it's going to follow us around, kind of like Blade Vortex, we're just going to uh, keep it on us and stride through enemies. Now, if you're using Charge still, or Warpath, I guess, you can charge up, like so, and you can charge through packs, and it feels pretty good. And generally, like, as you're hitting things, you're going to be stunning stuff, especially bosses, they're not going to stand a chance. Uh, I'm going to be using Aether Jump, though, because I have the, not mo the, uh, the mods that are making it so that when things are in stasis, they're going to take more damage. And so I'm just spinning up, keeping things up, because uh, this is so much a higher level map. This is level 58 content. So I'm coming up in this red mob, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Ooh, he hopped on me. And so you see, I broke him right away. He's stunned. But we're in kind of trouble here. There's a lot of stuff going on, so I might just activate my demon for him. And, uh, you know, you can move away during this. If you're uh, Juggernaut's on cooldown, it's a good opportunity for you to just use that to keep yourself safe. Because your cooldowns will, uh work and like go down while you're in the form uh, honestly it's something that like I use a lot especially during boss fights uh, while leveling because you just don't take any damage it just reduces the uh, duration that you're allowed to continue to be uh, in the form all right so we have a uh, shrine of greed here uh, this might actually get a little nuts so we're gonna try to activate as many of these as possible The reason it's going to get a little nuts is because uh, we're in the special game mode, so the you're not really supposed to get chests in here. And uh, we got knocked down there. And it's totally fine. But uh, in terms of loot, pretty good. 